Hello there, it's Doug here again. So in this video, I'm going to discuss and demonstrate all the techniques involved with preparing the body for an authentic Brian May Red Special replica guitar. And that's one that's made using two glued and screwed uh, block board sections with oak inserts. So the processes include uh, veneering the upper and lower faces and the side of the body, grain filling, staining and lacquering. And these are without doubt some of the most challenging phases of making a red special to execute neatly, even if you've got some degree of luthiery skill, which I certainly don't. So I guess uh, most self-taught amateur luthiers start out by making a solid body electric guitar with either a single or double cutaway body, possibly contoured, maybe painted or lacquered with a uniformly shaped neck, and perhaps just an unpainted uh, and unlacquered fretboard. And this is a, a very sensible way to learn and refine the basic skills that you need. However, making a Brian May Red Special requires skills more usually seen in cabinet making than luthiery, but as my demonstration videos aim to illustrate, are nevertheless quite possible for an untrained amateur to execute well, but you've got to do your research, practice and take your time. Research is important because if you're relying on internet forums for your guidance, as I was, uh, the key facts are often buried by myths and uninformed conjecture. So I've assembled all the hardware and the consumable items in this shot, along with the, the red special I made, so you can see the end result. So what I've got here is a, a spare panel of um, a custom made block board, and that measures uh, 18 inches by 16 inches by three quarter inch. So I won't cover in this video making the block board itself, but it is made from um, big shed kind of DIY store materials with kind of pine core. Uh, strips and uh, about three and a half millimeter thick plywood, which we've cut into panels. Okay, um, I've got a leftover piece of quarter sawn mahog mahogany marquetry veneer here, which is a rather nice grain to it. So in the first section of the video, I'll cut the veneer and I'll glue it to this uh, panel using the tight bond wood glue. Out there. It works very well for all kinds of um, luthery techniques, but it also works well for veneering, as I found. Um, I'll, what I'll also do is show you a technique um, that's worth considering for the side of the guitar, and that's using um, a contact adhesive. And this particular formulation is a non-drip contact adhesive by Evo Stick. When the glue on the main section of the veneer is dry, I'll apply this Jenkins Black Jacobfill grain filler. Okay, that's that. And I'll remove the excess so you can see how that all works and how the veneer hue and the general appearance of it changes because it does change quite dramatically when you do that. So it's, it's well worth watching the video just to see how things change when you put on the, the grain filler and then you wipe off the excess. So the next stage after the grain filling is to stain the veneer. And for that, I'm going to use Rustin's wood dye. And this is the red mahogany version. Now, on my three-quarter scale mini red special build, I applied a mixture of 80% of the red mahogany to 20% of the brown mahogany, Rustin's stain. And that was in an attempt to try to mimic this uh, red-brown hue that the original red specials acquired over the years. However, I found on this build, um, when I removed the grain filler with a cloth, the end result was to leave the veneer a quite quite a nice shade of uh, chestnut brown. Um, so I, I therefore didn't apply uh, any brown uh, stain into the mixture. I just simply used the red. And that seemed to work quite well. Now, the stain brand that Brian used in the 1960s was Ferniglass. Now, I wouldn't bother trying to find that. That brand has long been unavailable in the UK. Ferniglass, red mahogany. The other one you'll see, if you look at the picture that Greg Fryer took of Brian and Harold's workshop, there's another tin of stain, and that's a Joy brand wood stain, and that's a, an ebony colour. Okay, so that there is the Rustin's wood dye. In the last and probably will be the longest segment of this video, we're going to talk about Rustin's plastic coating. So what I'll do is I'll spend quite a bit of time discussing how to make up and how to use Rustin's plastic coating. This is a two-part uh, clear coat lacquer, which uh, again is kind of intended for use in cabinet making. 
It's certainly intended for use on flat surfaces, uh, so using it on a guitar body and neck uh, presents some challenges, but it is possible to use it. Obviously, Brian deployed it quite successfully, and um, I was able to use it quite successfully on my guitar too. But we'll spend quite a bit of time talking about the Rustins because there are lots of precautions you need to use with respect to the temperature and how you mix it and how you apply it um, when you apply the next coat. So I do cover these precautions and limitations of using Rustins on my website, that's dsgb.net, in the section on my Red Special Replica build project. And I'll put that link in the description below. Something else I'll cover in the section on Rustins is the use of this spirit powder dye. And I've got two flavours of that. I've got black and I've got mahogany. So what you can do with Rustin's plastic coating is tint it. Now, I understand this is what Brian did to coat the fretboard of the original Red Special. So you may read or hear people referring to this mysterious thing called Black Rustins. This product was available to, to Brian in the early to mid 1960s. There weren't too many options for tinting the, um, the Rustins plastic coating itself, which when it's made up is kind of a, a sort of light straw yellow color. Um, but you'll see this uh, black Rustins referred to. So this is how I think he did it. So he used this spirit powdered dye, which will dissolve in methylated spirits or alcohol based polishes and, and lacquers. Now I, I used the mahogany version relatively successfully to touch up parts of the, the neck, but this is a very dense stain. So you don't need to put very much of it in your um, portion or aliquot of lacquer for it to, to give a very dense color, a rich color hue indeed. But I'll demonstrate that in the section on Rustins itself. I'd like to take a look at this batch of Rustins plastic coating. And it's a part of a one litre pack, which I bought back in July 2017, and I intended to use on my build here. I actually found I didn't need to break into this pack, that 250 millilitres was enough. So I was going to use it uh, when recording this video, but I noticed a few things weren't quite right. So firstly, um, it's gone quite gloopy. It seems to be more viscous than it was originally. It also seems to be a much darker yellow hue than it was originally. So I think originally it was a sort of lighter straw colored yellow. And also if you see the plastic container is sort of looks like it's been sucked in as if the air has been drawn out of the top, but the pack's never been opened. So something didn't seem quite right. So I contacted Rustin's technical support and uh, they're very good actually. So if you need to contact them, um, they generally reply within the day, uh, certainly if you're on UK working hours. And uh, the chap who responded told me that it's most likely lost its solvent, which uh, is worth bearing in mind considering I've never opened it. So it's been sealed for four years, but it clearly, the product does have a shelf life. 